Hello everyone, I'm Ken Rowe and this video we're bringing you today is kind of like a postcard from our hardworking and smart friends at Sage Creek Gallery in Santa Fe. So when Cindy asked me to do this, I quickly said yes, I'd be glad to because I love sharing the behind the scenes creative process to my audience. And so well, I had to laugh when she said, will you, will you have some footage of your studio? Well, the reason I laugh is because I work from live reference. And so I go where the animals are. And today you're in my studio at Run and W Wildlife Rehab Center with our model right here. So my concept is I have been doing this for 31 years. And what you're seeing is an evolution that took me so many years to perfect. But using live reference isn't a common scenario. It's very difficult because you're dealing with the elements. I can't pay that owl to pose for me. But I can't get life in my work, that spark of life that I'm hoping to get without having life in front of me. So I basically am a glorified Xerox machine. I'm trying to copy and get all the information I can possibly assemble on the knowledge of these animals and translate that to my hands. And maybe that translation is the 10,000 hour theory they talk about. I find it so interesting that, you know, I have a perfectly adequate studio at home, but I'd rather be out here. What a great office to be in. It takes me to Montana, Alaska, Wyoming. In this case, we're at Run and W Wildlife Rehab Center in Cornville. Please support the wildlife rehab centers. They work so hard to rehab these animals. I feel a real privilege in being able to work with them. I've been given great access to incredible animals over the years. Now the system that I've developed over the years, and I'm sure other artists have used too, is basically building the skeleton from the inside out. So what a lot of people don't know, I was a taxidermist for a number of years, and everything we did in taxidermy was based on the skeleton. And so if I can envision what the bones look like in that owl, and I can replicate those in my armature, which holds everything up, that proportion of that bird's going to be much more accurate. So I'll show you as we go. We have to design a system that's fast because I don't have the luxury of time. If that animal is hitting a pose that I want, I don't have days or even hours to adjust. Okay, so now what I'm doing is, again, this is the shoulder. The humerus comes off the shoulder, ulnar radius, and then say that's the wing. Now, you can kind of see where I'm going with this. Okay, so I've got my armature roughed in. Again, knowing that it's all flexible. So let's say I'm sculpting the owl, I've got the face roughed in, the eyes, whatever, and he strikes a pose that's flying. Well, there it is. So that armature works just like the skeleton. So as I'm working on the piece, I have this flexibility the whole time. Again, this is what taxidermy taught me. It taught me a tremendous amount about how well, anatomy and physiology of how everything moves, the dynamics of everything. So I hope to pull that into my work with every piece. So we'll put him back to the position. And I always like to start with a face because the entire proportions of that bird are based on the head. And I don't have the luxury of a tape measure measuring him, but I can kind of measure with my eye to see where I'm going with it. Now this is the material that we use. It's called plastiline, which is a wax-based material that does not cure. It's very forgiving. If it gets warm in the sun, it's perfect because it's very malleable. If it gets cold, it's hard. So I have some I've already warmed up. So I'm gonna come around here. And start roughing in the head. Okay, so it's very rough, very crude, but let's say, well, we know an owl can turn his head, I don't know how many degrees. Let me lock this. I can move that head any way I want. I can make it looking down, I can make it looking up, I can even turn it clear around to his back. So that's the beauty of this material, being the annealed aluminum wire, and everything is flexible, and this moves kind of like flesh. So let's just say we fast forwarded in time, and I'm asked this question all, all the time, how much time would it take you to do a field study? And this is what I would call a field study, it, it's not done. But the answer to that would be 
probably three days and 31 years and six hours. This is a lifetime of experience trying to plug into what I'm deciphering from taxidermy years ago to what you see today. And I love working in the field because it makes my work more spontaneous. I don't have the luxury of time again. And if that owl strikes a pose that I like, I've got to capture as quickly as possible. So that on that note, you're working on an, an instinctive level. And that's, I think, what all artists want to work on. You, you, you gather that knowledge, the 10,000 hours or more of knowledge, and you trust your instincts. So that's what you see here. So, well, a good case in point, I'm now working on a commission of a mountain lion piece. Uh, probably 20 years ago, I got access to this mountain lion named Simba. So I sculpted a small version of it in the field that I cast it in bronze. Well, thankfully, I got a commission I'm working on now to do it life size. Well, Simba has unfortunately passed. I don't have access to Simba anymore, but I still have that reference I, I sculpted in the field with Simba sitting right next to me. So now I'm mathematically scaling that maquette to the life-size version. So I start with a skeleton like you saw earlier, build the bones, build the muscles, and build the hair. So it's all built from the inside out. You can see some of the armature here. Very rough on this side. But the spontaneity is there. I'm just roughing in the hair pattern or the feather patterns. I'll get rid of that. But if I finish this, and I may, you never know, I might make this a wall hanger where there is nothing more than the field study. It hangs on the wall. It's up in the air like an owl would be. And we'll see what happens. If it does, Sage Creek Gallery will let you know. So thank you for joining us. If you have any questions, call Sage Creek Gallery. They have a great website. And thank you for letting me into your, your homes.